Hey, my name is Tobal, and welcome to X4 Foundations. This will be a brand new Let's Play of X4 Foundations, which is a massive space simulation game, if you're unfamiliar with it. We are on version 3.0. That's including the large 3.0 update that just came out today, along with the Split Vendetta expansion, which is the first major expansion for X4, which adds a, a couple of new starts here. It introduces the Split Race, along with two starts where you can be on either side of this war against the Patriarch of Zyarth, either supporting the Free Families or supporting the Patriarchy. We also have the traditional starts here, along with some new things that are added in 3.0. If you're unfamiliar with the X4 game, you want to improve your flight, basically how to control the ship, how to get into combat. These tutorials are for you, and the advanced gameplay talks about things like managing your fleet, uh, or in kind of investigating stations, stuff like that uh, you might not normally see in the game until later on. So it's pretty helpful to kind of get a feel for that before you jump into it. But we are going to start the game off on the untested Explorer start. Because I wanted to get my feet back into the X4 pool, so to speak. Get familiar with the game again, test out some of the mechanics that I've not really seen in quite some time. And yeah, we just want to have some fun and kind of come at it maybe obliquely, see what's going on with the split fight. I also know that there are some new diplomacy missions that have been introduced in 3.0 that let you kind of maybe have uh, kind of a, a foot into the door of the galactic politics a bit. So we're going to test that out as well. As the game is loading, I will mention that if you do enjoy this video or the series, please do like, subscribe. Also, please leave a comment. All those things, of course, do help to boost the video in popularity in the YouTube search and the mysteries of the YouTube algorithm. But here we are. Thanks so much for being here with me. We are now spawned in inside of our Discovery. I think it's a Discovery Vanguard or a Discoverer is the ship. We are in Paranid space outside of a Paranid shipyard. The Paranid are a uh, religious kind of faction. And let's go into our player menu real quick. We are Salaya Terran or Salaya. Salaya? I think it's Salaya. We're going to go with Slayer Darian. Darian's like a random last name that I use every so often. We're going to turn ourselves into a Darian Space Industries if we ever are able to save up enough money and start our own business. You know, we are an explorer at heart, but we also wouldn't mind making a wee bit of money. Now, we start off the game here in the Sacred Relic system, and you'll notice that we already kind of know of a few other different systems. Argon Prime is home to... The Argon Federation, as well as the Antigone Republic, I believe, has some stations there. Oh, there's another faction. Let's go into player information and then down to factions. We actually only know of the Alliance of the Word, which is what we're part of. And then the God Realm of the Pyranid will stuff. But either way, we really don't have much guidance when you start the game. Like, there's really, you know, there's no, like, go here, do that kind of a thing. You have no missions assigned to you. The world is your oyster, which is a big part of why we like the X4 series so much. It's pretty much do whatever you want to do. I will be covering some basics in the game. For example, shift space gives you the uh, steering mode where you're able to use your mouse and keyboard. Control space will kind of let you do this flight assist where you can continue traveling in your original direction, but look around in different directions. So like the non-Newtonian or Newtonian physics, I don't remember if it's non or if it is. I don't know. Either way, it's fun. If you don't like certain things in the game, do check to see if there is a setting to change it. We can turn a couple things off. I have auto roll off. I normally turn on maintain speed in menus so that you're able to read your map and kill some time as you're buzzing across a big sector. Along with the show control mode messages down here. If you don't like these messages at the bottom, right there or right here, if you turn off the show expert thing, that will no longer be present. All right, so welcome to X4. What do we do? Uh, pretty much anything, right? We are an explorer right now, so why don't we go exploring? That's actually, there is a quest right here. This is like a little yellow icon. Uh, is showing us that there is a quest available. Delicate situation. Destroy some mines. There's a ship, I think, that is stuck in an area with some mines. So yeah, we'll help them out. We're going to accept that quest, 40,000 credits and go towards the giant orange arrow. And this will give a chance to talk about some other features like press shift one to go into travel mode. You'll see the entire HUD turns orange a bit and our speed is going to start getting higher and higher. Right above our speed is our acceleration, the smaller bar. The white bar is your hull. 
the blue bar here is kind of your energy. It's kind of a combined thing. You can use it for thrusting. You can use it uh, for your shields as well. So you got to be careful about the management of that. And we do want to be careful about approaching this because if we get too close, we're going to trigger these fancy pants mines. So I will stop our travel mode a little bit away. We are starting to see the ship on scanner. I think the little blue things, yeah, there's a bunch of different mines. All right, we're going to, oh boy, that might have been a bit too close. Nope, I think we're okay. Back up a little bit, scrolling my mouse wheel back, and then pressing Alt to stop. Okay, everything is nice and calm. So let's go ahead and target some of these bad boys. We might be too far away. I don't quite remember what the active range of our weapons are. Here we go. Hey, that took out a couple. I'm happily to happy to engage in some uh, random mine destruction. Pretty easy mission. This is a basic thing where you're just going to destroy some mines, let that ship be free. Don't get too close because they are smart mines. They will start to come uh, chase you down a bit, which I'm pretty sure you're fast enough to get out of the way of. But early on, our ship is very, very weak. We have a very weak hull. We have a very uh, weak weapon system. So don't think you can go out there and take on the world just quite yet. It doesn't, you know, you have to make a little sense, right? You're not going to go out and uh, take a destroyer down with a little tiny vessel. A couple more things to kill. And we are Gucci. In this playthrough, I probably will start the game by doing a couple of basic quests. We'll get some money built up. I'll do some exploring. We'll go meet the rest of the world, uh, the galaxy, basically, in all these different sectors. Hi, friend. Hope you have a great day. Mission completed. We received 40,000 credits, so now we have 45,000 credits to our name. Look at that. We are already establishing, our, uh, establishing ourselves as a genuinely good person. Let's do a little bit of exploration. Now, there's a couple ways to do that, and I think our ship, if I pull up the information about our vessel, basically ship interactions, you can go to ship information from here. I think you can also do it from your property owned list, right click and go to information as well. We can go to the loadout to see that we have two basic Pulse One lasers. We do have a couple of deployables, satellite, nav beacon, resource probe, as well as a weak shield generator, engine thrusters. We do have a long range scanner, Mark II, which does increase the scanning resolution as well as it does allow you to do long range stuff. So long range capable is this Shift 3, and then you hold down R, and you're going to release this wave of science, <laughs> of sensors. And it's going to kind of give you this visual ping back on any items that the ping unlocks. So there's some stuff out that way. You'll now see that it actually shows up as a question mark on the map. So there's some random stuff here and there. And we can kind of go explore that if we wanted to. That's one way if you're, an ex uh, if you're exploring a system that you've never been to before. The other way is just to kind of pick a direction and go. Hit Shift F1 and then just kind of go wherever you want to go for a while. Oftentimes when you're in a system and you just start to look around, you'll, you'll be able to see against the black background of the sky some different things. So there's a facility right there off in the distance. There's a couple facilities north of us or above us rather. And when you come into a new system, I often take a look around and try to see if I can't find a Stargate or a Jump Gate. I call it a Stargate out of habit. The Jump Gate is the device that'll get you between these different sectors. So out of our current sector and into something new and fancy. This is a lovely little pan around view of our Discoverer. Nothing really too big over here. There's a couple of space stations. Now, all these different stations in the game have a purpose. So some of them are defense platforms. Some of them are shipyard, but a lot of them are actually a manufacturing base. So let's see, have we passed anything yet? There's the shipyard. We're about to pop something on the scanner over here in front of us. There we go. A small uh, snail farm. We also have a Claytronics factory. So these are actually doing something. And I'm going to use this cool trick, which is to use control space. Flip around. Hit control space again and slingshot myself in a brand new direction. Which is pretty fun. Let's go ahead and slow down a bit. To take a look at these stations. So these stations in the game... You can make these stations, by the way. You can make a station just this big. And if you don't know the size of the game, let's go ahead and get really close to one of these. You can make a station completely this big. And a lot of these stations always need something. So stations will generally need power. If they have staff on board, they'll need food and water. And you can actually make a self-contained station 
where you have a solar cell and you've got maybe uh you know something that generates water as well so uh where you're where you're melting down ice from miners that deliver it to your station lots of cool options there so many massive freaking ideas here look at the sides of the station and that's what i really love one of the many things i love about x4 and they introduced this in x uh, x rebirth actually and x rebirth was a game that didn't really get received all that well but one thing it did do was oh, bump no it instituted this sense of scale and it gave these stations a really massive feel uh, which is super enjoyable Selena, thank God. there's a high-tech freighter over here that we can kind of come up next to. When you get really close to a, a larger ship, like a capital-sized ship, you actually will... Oh, God. Hopefully not crash. You will kind of fall in line with it. Your thrust will match its thrust, and you'll actually follow its pathing. It's somewhere there next to us. Oh, is that, like, literally... Yeah, we're actually out just on the underside of the ship. So if you ever have to try to dock with a large ship, if you get close enough, you'll kind of get into this envelope where your ship will just match them perfectly, which is really helpful for, for landing and stuff like that. A lot of these bigger ships do have docking areas. In fact, this one does too, right on the backside. If you wanted to go dock there, we shall not. We shan't. So let's take a look at the mission screen. I think I did see a mission available. I think it was over here. We might have to go back closer. Let's flip around. We also got scanned by the police, the space police. Farm. Do you have to be careful? Uh, there are some illegal items in the game. You can pick up items a very, uh, a couple of different various ways. Sometimes destroying enemy ships, they'll drop things. You can find random cargo Don't containers that are out in space. And sometimes they'll have these objects in there. The items sometimes are worth a lot of money. You can sell them for a profit. You can also use them as raw materials in some kind of a crafting area, uh, crafting item. I think this quest that was over here expired. I don't see that quest available anymore. All right, so we've explored a little bit of this system. Let's actually target, I think it's control, selected object one. Can't remember how we target something from the overlay map. Maybe shift. If we start guidance to the object, it'll give us like a permanent, almost like a quest marker. So we're gonna fly to this jump gate and we're gonna start exploring some of these other systems that are out here in the X4 world. Now, we know so far, we know of the Paranid race, we know of our faction, which is the God Realm of the Paranid and the Alliance of the Word. I don't remember what the Alliance of the Word's big background is, to be honest with you. I think you can, might be able to find some stuff out in... Not quite. There actually is this cool timeline. I don't know what this timeline is. I don't know if this is historical or if this is in the future or in the current game. Maybe certain things happen at certain at certain points in your gameplay. Like after day 74, something happens. Or maybe you're going back in time and learning lore about the history. So that'll be something I like to figure out as well. It's been a while since I've looked at the lore of X4, so I'm not quite familiar. One of the cool things about X4 is you're able to jump between X4 systems immediately system. with no loading time, which is, to be honest, a pretty freaking impressive display. But it also is why you take a thousand years to load the game at the start of the game it's pretty much loading everything or or giving you the materials for uh everything now we are in a new system called pious mists and right in front of us here is what i like to call the space autobahn this is a hyperlane i don't remember what they called it it's like an acceleration thing what we're going to do is jump on this Oh, my navigation's all over the place. Let's just go ahead and go near it and then come out of fast travel. There we go. And I will get onto this ribbon of light and glory. And it's going to act as a massive space highway, taking us in one direction very, very quickly. And they've rigged it so that it actually goes into a jump gate. So it's going to seamlessly take us into a brand new system. So boom, we're in Unholy retribu uh, Retribution here. And now the Space Autobahn is this really big loop that takes you all the way around here, all the way down through Argon Prime, all the way back like this. And it's really great, especially early game, in order for you to kind of flesh out your map a bit, also look for any quests that are available. We can see a couple of quest offers here. Uh, lost and found, identify bountiful resources. So we'll swing through all of these different sectors because I want to kind of just map the world a little bit. I want to get more to our, you know, to our overlay map. Now, if you get into the trading aspect of the game, 
one big thing that you'll want to do eventually is you want to know what the wares are that are currently for sale at these different parts or these different factories. So this engine part factory is going to need some kind of material. The, um, the thing is though, you don't really know what's there until you dock or if you drop a satellite off, a satellite can give you a live feed in a certain radius and it'll give you all the price information. So before you set up a trade network, one of the big things to do is hire a ship and order it to go drop a bunch of satellites down in order to give you a pretty good picture of what the trade life is like in all of these different systems. And once you hire a trader, and that's the cool thing too, you can hire a, a trading ship and a trading captain and they'll go and try to make trades for you, the most profitable trades that they can find. And that's a big part of the game. One of the things that I had trouble with the last time I played the game, the AI wasn't really all that up to speed and you had a lot of issues where the AI backed up at a lot of stations, the market wasn't quite even, and you had a lot of problems with the gameplay. So we're gonna see how 3.0 and how the Split Vendetta expansion is uh, has changed the game and how the AI is these days. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait until we get into Argon Prime, which is actually right about now. Ooh, actually there's a lot of missions available here. Once we're into Argon Prime, I'm probably gonna start working from Argon Prime. I, I like working from the Argon Federation side of the house. We'll see what kind of missions are offered here. There we go, let's go ahead and just pop off of the space freeway. Oh God, we're doing the loop dupes. No, come off it. There we go, and then stop. Right in front of the uh, the E space erectile dysfunction sign, of course. Perfect. <laughs> let's go to our map and take a look and see what we got. By the way, the red here, if you look at the legend to find out this kind of stuff, where it shows us that we are, sorry, wrong button. The legend tells us that we're in a mineral region, so it's telling us that there are a bunch of asteroids all over the place, and you can mine those for a profit. We've got a couple missions that are offered. Tons of missions, actually. Uh, Hatikva's Trade Revolution, this is a faction, a major faction story mission. So Hatikva's Trade, or Hatikva's something, let's take a look at, we probably introduced ourselves to a bunch of new factions here. We have Antigone Republic, Argon Federation, Dukes, Buccaneers, this is new. I have no idea what this is. Maybe it's a pirate group. Fallen families, free families. God realm of the Paranid. Hatikva's Free League. This is more of a trade-focused group, I believe. Holy Order of the Pontifex. Talati are traders. And Ministry of Finance. I think both of these are the same faction. If I recall. The Xenon and then the Zyarth Patriarchy. So lots of new factions on board right now. Let's go back to the missions. I don't really want to trigger the Hatikva's Trade Revolution just yet. Let's get at least a couple more things. Station engineers needed. They want us to hire two stationers and bring them to their station. A little bit harder for us right now. Let's do Caught in a Trap. This is another simple destroy mines kind of a mission. I'll do this probably between cuts here, but we'll get over near that area. But yeah, when I start the game, I normally do enough quests early on to get us some money in order to buy a ship. Cerberus. And in order to buy a ship, you simply go to the map, go to a wharf or a shipyard. Now, the wharfs are the ones that do medium and small ships. So if you go to buy ships, you'll actually get this designer screen and you can design the type of ship you want. So yeah, we are in fact a uh, Discover. I think we're a Discover Vanguard is what we are. So a Discover is the ship that we're in right now. You're able to choose which modules go where. You can also order medium-sized ships from here, transporters, stuff like that. I don't want to run into this minefield. And then the shipyard is where you get larger-sized ships. So the large-sized ships are large transporters. Think of things like a uh, an Iteron 5 from EVE Online or something like that. Along with the extra-large. I think the extra-large ships are like capital size. So we're talking about... Carriers, also possibly the ships that you're able to build stuff with, like build stations, a builder, our construction ship, our massive, massive ships. So let me go ahead and destroy these mines, complete the quest, and I'll be right back. Unknown object. There we go. Our last mine has poofed into a big cloud of dust, and we're getting a little bit more money. So I think what I'll do is get back on the Autobahn, run around a bit more. I don't know. Do I want to do Hatikva's trade league thing. I've never done this one before. It might be interesting. I'll tell you what. Let's get into some faction storyline. Let's do it. Let's join the Hitikva's trade revolution. Reen Omara is the leader here. Uh, invites our proven friends and allies to help us in a potentially life-changing endeavor. 
We are a people who will do what's necessary to survive. Uh, new path. Apparently they might have been criminals before, but we're taking a new path of industry, cooperation, yada yada. So they're in need of reliable pilots. Yeah, let's do it. We're going to be a little bit of a traitor, so we shall accept the quest to talk to Reen Omara. And I will jet forward upon the jetway. Also the entire time keeping an eye out for any nifty quests that are available here. Station Engineers isn't... I don't know. I think you have to have a certain amount of money up front, if I remember. And you can go to these different stations and area and hire other officers and, and things like that. So that's kind of what they want you to do. I just don't quite remember how to do it. And I don't want the pressure of a quest where I might screw it up. Alright, we are in the right spot, I think. Yep. So once we get to about here, we will jump off the jetway and go see what Reen has to say for us. To us. Alright, so we have landed. We're going to get out of our ship and go chat with Reen. Sometimes the voice gets a little bit weird in terms of when I'm recording how, how well you can hear it. So if I do this uh, story and it winds up being really quiet, I'll just kind of cut it and I'll tell you what we're doing here. Reen Omara's office. Let's go. A Tikva Tree Free League. Oh God. Free Trade League? There we go. Oh, a cutscene. I didn't think cutscenes even existed. All right, so we were basically told to take this trading ship that they're going to give to us and deliver some goods. So it is uh, down here in the luxury docking bay, not the normal peasant docking bay, apparently. Take a look at our new ship. I guess they're just entrusting us. Oh, wait, that's our ship over there. So here's the new one that they want us to fly. So deliver 250 units of medical goods. Sure, I will try not to crash your precious ship. And I don't know, I'm, it, they kind of made it seem like if we do this mission, we're going to be given this trading vessel, which is kind of interesting. So I guess it's an easy way maybe to start off into the career of a trader or a businessman. So that's a pretty easy thing to do. So we'll go ahead and take this over to the highway, jump on board and deliver the goods wherever they need to go. This might literally be the easiest money I think I ever make. So all we have to do is pretty much, oh God, going so fast when you pull off the highway sometimes it keeps you going in the same direction and the same original speed even if you're not or you are in flight assist mode so you may have to press alt in order to stop your movement i think you can press alt when you're on the highway and that might jump you off i'm not entirely sure but here we are we are at this silicon refinery going to try to stop before i smash into everything forgot that a big ship uh you know a little bit more momentum so do be careful with that this is a relatively it's like, it's, I think it's a medium. The icon, if you look down at the mini-map, our icon's a little bit different than what it was before. I think that means it's a medium transporter. Although, I'm not 100% sure. Mediums, I think, are the only ones that can fit here on these pads. The larger ships are the ones that fit right there. Ooh, we docked from far away, which means this ship has a docking computer, which kind of makes docking just a little bit faster. Not a bad thing to have. Um, let's see, what's our actual mission here? I believe it is to deliver goods. So do we just deliver to the silicon refinery? So I think what we need to do is go sit down, go to trade, and then we've got our 250 units of medical supplies. We're going to be offering them to the station. Waiting for the trade to finish, and I think that's pretty much it. Hello there, Captain. Oh, hi there. You're delivering goods on behalf of Hatikpa. We are. Stand by while we run some checks. Rutro. Did uh Hatikva put a bunch of cocaine in our <laughs> in our medical supplies? Oh, okay, good. We're happy to see Hatikva move away from those sketchy dealings. Oh, okay. So apparently we are we working for the cartels. It's possible. We're we're going to work with the cartels and uh they're going straight, so maybe that's a bit of a problem. Alright, fair enough. That was the basic part of the quest. I think all we have to do now is go back to Reen. So, kind of a fetch and go kind of a quest. There is a mission here. What do we got? Let's go out of the bubble. Oh, God, there's a massive ship landing on my left here. What was this quest that I just saw an icon for that's right here? Le uh, leak fix contract. Okay, these are kind of easy. I don't want to get into them right now because it's going to have us do something different. But there are some leaks on these stations, and it's uh, a data leak. And you can either repair the data leak through a quest, or if you move your ship close enough and you use the shift 2 mode, which is scanning, 
you're able to kind of intercept a data packet. Now, I think sometimes you can intercept it and get blueprints, which are very, very helpful if you want to, because you don't actually know how to build all of these different station modules at the start of the game. You have to either scan them or steal the blueprint through a data leak. I kind of don't remember, so I'll have to experiment a bit with that. There's also a major quest line that you get when you scan one of those data links. Now, I don't know if I'm going to do that quest this time around because Entering I've done it before and it does take quite a while to do, but it gives you, at the end of the day, it gives you something. I don't want to spoil it if you're interested in doing it, but it gives you something that helps to kick off uh, kind of your, your empire career, so to speak. So it's up to you whether or not you want to do that, but if you did want to find that storyline, then I would suggest going around to different stations, listening for what sounds like static, and then going towards a uh, kind of a, a broken piece of material on the station and scanning it using this F2. I really like these docking computers because you can pretty much come in as hard as you want, hard and fast as you want, and it'll just catch you and immediately draw, pull you into the system or uh, pull you onto the station, which is pretty cool. Alrighty, down we go. Trying to find Reen Omara again, part two of our quest. And I will just give you the highlights at the end of the day, because the voice is a little bit too low to really hear. There goes Dal Busta. Dal Busta got that swagger. Basically, the trade league here, or whoever it is, they want us to work with uh, Dal Busta down there. And uh, I guess they're trying. They're getting a little bit harassed. And uh, we will so, talk what do you say? and say, sounds good. Basically, the scale plate pack are a faction that don't appreciate that we're trying to go straight, or the Hatikva's Trade League is trying to go straight. So they're giving them a little bit of trouble. We're going to go, I think that's his ship down there. We're going to go chat with Dal Busta and find out how to help. I don't mind all that much. There we go. I'm in. I'm in without any information whatsoever. Why don't you go chase Dal down? I'm sure he'd want to show off his ship. Cool. I will go chase down Dalbusta and take a look at his ship. Let's go over to the luxury docking bay, medium-sized. Kind of a massive ship are we going to be playing with? Holy crap, man. Is this a medium? Seriously? This is ridiculous. So there's Dalbusta. Hello, oh, friend. Captain. Welcome aboard my what ship. you want me to do? Beauty, okay, so we have... A new quest here from our friends. Uh, it basically, they want us to go investigate a scale plate packed station and insert a worm into their computer system. It was also mentioned that we might need a scout ship. So right now our goal is to undock. By the way, when you're docked anywhere, you can hit shift D to immediately go back to whichever ship you choose. Which ship did it want us to go to? I don't think either O or, or. Oh, we do. Actually, we just did. Straight up. We just got the Callisto trading ship. Was that all we had to do? Yeah, Callisto Sentinel right there. And now we have ourselves a brand new trading ship. Cool. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go shift D to our Discovery Vanguard or Discoverer Vanguard. We've uploaded the worm to your ship database. Cool. We've got ourselves worry, a worm. Don't do anything to your systems. Yeah, so you claim, buddy. So you claim. Okay. So here's the thing. We've got this mission, and I know that we need to do this mission, which is great. But now that we've got this trading ship, I kind of want to explore if we can start doing some trading. Let's go to our property owned to keep it clean. Now, we don't have a pilot for this ship. And we really don't have a way of detecting which goods are valuable. So, here's what we're gonna do. We are going to go and, I think we can do this from property owned, Callisto redesign. And all I'm gonna do is go down here been so long since I've messed with this, so I apologize if I'm not going to get it right in the first go. Where do you find that? Under paint, engine, shield, turret. Maybe we can't do this. Okay. I bet we have to do it somewhere else. Crew 3. We can't change the crew. There's some way to hire a pilot. Maybe we just actually have to find them. Hang on. Tell you what. Let's go searching for someone that doesn't seem to be doing anything. So we're looking for a creature on the promenade or something like that. They'll be wandering around. There, I'm sure there's better ways to do this. I'm just kind of struggling to remember how. There's a crewman. I think you can just promote someone, by the way. Is that a thing we can do? Right, this might be the parented race. There's a scale plate. Hello. Hello. You are also a crewman with no skill in anything. Let's take the walk -a Take the walk -a to glory. Hey, we couldn't have a walk -a in airport CEO. 
but we can have a walkalator in C and X4. There you go. That's all I ever wanted was to just get on a walkalator and buzz around a little bit. You know what's also kind of funny? Sometimes you can go onto other ships. I think we might be able to do this. Hang on. Oh, oh god. <laughs> it's starting to take off without us. I wasn't able to find the person I'm looking for. Where are you kids going? I might just hire a crewman and randomly assign them to our ship as the pilot. And I don't remember if that's a possibility or not. Man, it's been a while. How do we get pilots? It has been a hot minute. What are you? Don't leave me. What about in here? Can we go to some kind of a crew trader corner? Ship dealership trader corner. Bunch of different offices. Sometimes stations have random characters that are just kind of hanging out here and there. All right, nobody in here. Let's go shift D back in our ship. So let's go to the Callisto. And I don't Callisto. know... We go Send into now. trade. Yeah, there's really no upgrade here. In order to do the upgrade I was thinking of, we have to go dock at a uh, one of the equipment docks here. There should be one nearby. A bunch of different factories. There is a defense platform. I think Argon Prime has one, if nothing else. A wharf here. A wharf would have it. A wharf would have the ability to modify the ship. I think also to hire a pilot. But then we'd have to, like, come all the way back here. Okay. I'll tell you what I'll do. Let's go into our other ship. Oh, wrong one. All right, let's go ahead and warp over to our Discover Vanguard. And I will do the mission that they want us to do. I don't think there's a time limit on that, come to think about it. Let's double check the mission manager. Snooping around, no time limit. We'll deal with that in our own time. I'm going to go ahead and undock. First, I'm going to get out of my seat. <laughs> We're going to undock. I'm going to go over to Argon Prime. And I'm going to search for a pilot. And then you can hire them and bring them back and tell them to transfer over to your ship. So we're going to go for a pilot first, and I will be right back if I can find them. This is probably not the best way to do this, but I don't quite remember the other way. I know you can find random crew members on other large ships, like a high trade, a large, like a large... Um, capital size ship, so a large trader, also the construction ships that you might find around, and actually they look like this on the map right there. That's a construction vessel Mammoth Vanguard. They often have uh, pilots for hire as well. I just don't remember if there's an easier way to get a pilot other than to kind of go up to one and say hello. So let me land real quick here at Argon Wharf, and what I want to do is get out of my seat. Discover Let's go Vanguard. into our menu, right click on the Discover Vanguard. We should be able to go into redesign from here. And because we're in a station that has redesign capabilities, no, not quite. We're not able to do anything different here. I thought we could, because we're at a wharf, are we not? There's no pilot on the ship. Okay, let's go ahead and sit down. And then I guess we have to do the upgrade from here. Fair enough. Now, where is the crew part? Here it is down here. Okay, there is what I was looking for. Which is the pilot. Crap, I can't get a pilot because I'm in the ship. How do you... How does one... Hire yon pilot <laughs> when you are not... Uh, when you're already in the ship? Apparently that might not be an option. You can have three crew members. We can have some service crew. I guess we could just hire one apprentice here. It'd be one. I just want one simple crewman here. There we go. We got one crewman. Let's go ahead and add to the shopping list and confirm order. It is all of 6,000 credits for that. There is a little bit of a timer. Normally not too hard to deal with. Okay, so now, if I were to get up, and this is part of dealing with crew management. It's been a hot minute since I've played with crew management at all. If we go to the Discovery Vanguard, go to Information, and then Crew, we should have a list of someone like right here. Cool. The question is, can I somehow talk to that crew member and have him assigned as the pilot? Sort by skill. Okay, so Danila Mattel isn't doing anything. There we go. We can promote to pilot. There we go. And now they are finally piloting the Discover Vanguard. They came up through the teleporter, and they're not going to take over the helm. They've never flown a day in their life. <laughs> Best of luck. But you can give people orders while you're on the ship, I think, to go somewhere. So we're going to say, why don't we tell our 
lovely Discoverer Vanguard to go dock at this. Uh, I can't do it because it's kind of a weird, funky overlay. Go dock at this station. Can I do that? Dock at the trading station. And then sure enough, if you want to be carried around and you don't have to think about too much, you want to maybe go get yourself a drink, you can let your pilot take care of stuff. Now, they will behave in the manner that you've set up through the default behavior, uh, which is, again, in, in one more tab. As you can tell, if you've not played X4 before, it is a very complex menu-heavy system. Now, the 3.0 update has really, and, and over subsequent updates, they've really tried to remove some of the complexity or at least try to get it all onto one screen. So there's less clicking through to get to what you want to do. So it is going to take a little bit of time for you to get used to this kind of stuff. Information, here's the default behavior. So right now her order is to undock and then dock. And you can queue up different things. There's also like default behavior. So if there's nothing else going on, they're set to just hold position. You could tell them to go do other stuff, to go fly or hold, uh, you can explore, but they need to have three stars in piloting or police a system. They need to have at least two stars in piloting skill. The trader as well, oh, that's gonna suck. I wanted to do auto trading, but the trader does need to have at least three stars in trading. I'm really confused as to how to find a trader. I might have to break down and go to the forums to find that information out. But either way, at least we were able to experiment a little bit with the whole piloting thing. Okay, so we made it back down to the station, and now that we've got our pilot friend here on the same station, what I'm going to do, or at least try to do... Actually, can I talk to her directly? I chat with you. Work somewhere else for me. This is a little bit more manual than you need to. You don't really need to go up to them, but it's kind of cool that you can do it. We're going to tell them to go to the Callisto Sentinel as the... Uh, do I have to do this right here? Select, right-click, and then select as the captain. Cool. Affirmative. So they're going to change ships for us. Now, they don't have the skill to go do auto trading yet, but we still can do and use them for a couple of things. So what I'll do is I'll select the Callisto Sentinel. I want them to take it over to the wharf in order to do some upgrades. So we'll do the dock at first, and then we'll let our pilot go take care of that. Eventually, I'm going to load her up with some maybe some satellites if she has the space, and I'll have her start deploying a satellite network in order to prepare ourselves for the future, I mean, maybe we'll start trading between only these two systems to start with, and we'll expand from there. But, while she is doing that, I'm going to go ahead and undock, and take care of this mission we've got, which is to uh, scan the scale plate packed data leak. Man, they don't make it easy on the, the tongue there to pronounce. Let's go find where exactly we're supposed to go. Mission manager, snooping around. Okay, so any intel we get on scale plate, scale plate packed data leak. Do we simply just have to find a scale plate uh, system? That might be what we need to do. Any intel station provided. There's no navigation. Set to inactive. Set to active. Yeah, there's no additional navigation that we're getting. And it's not telling us to dock or anything. So I guess we have to find out where the scale plate pack hangs out. And to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure. Are they going to be part of the of this group here? Talati. Crap, I don't know how we're going to find this. Argon, ARG. The first three letters tell you what the faction's name is. Oh, they gave us the location. I think they gave us the location of a couple of different systems here. There is a scale plate. Back. I'm pretty sure this is a scale plate. Let's go to information. Um, SCA. I'm fairly sure this is SCA means scale plate. And these things just kind of popped up. So we're going to have to go on a bit of a jaunt. Not terribly far off. So I'm going to set this to guidance. And we'll jump on board one of our transport nodes here. You also can see the green dot that represents our little Callisto Sentinel starting to take off and do its own thing. So she will be taking care of that ship for us, hopefully not getting it 100% destroyed. Sometimes you just have to trust, you know? Sometimes you have to trust. Another little bit of a, a cheatsy doodle, apparently. The navigation is actually taking us what looks like to a gate that's going to take us between Silent Witness 1 uh, and Silent Witness 6. 
So, or sorry, 11. So, pretty helpful. Crap, I almost missed my exit. A bit funky that it, it automatically does that for you, but I guess at the same time, it's, it's, it's kind of nice. This is actually an accelerator, I think. Accelerators will kind of throw you between sectors of the same name. I'm not sure if this is called a system or exactly what it is, but you notice the border is a bit different. So we actually have Silent Witness 1, uh, 12, 11, stuff like that. So the borders are all open. And I guess to get between these areas, you have to use this accelerator. So I'm not sure, oh God, uh, which update did the accelerators or why we have to use accelerators oh, versus, okay. you know, other things. But we shall go through it and uh, go from there. Okay, so we are in Silent Witness 11. And what we need to do, I believe, is get up close to one of those things I mentioned before, which is kind of a vulnerable data point at one of these factories. So let's go ahead and come down. Oh shit, it's gonna be hostile to us. What if it's gonna pop us as soon as we get near? Or if we're gonna have to fight off? Well, apparently not. Oh, that was one ship. Okay. Further leaks, interesting. Maybe that means you, you're able to make a leak. All right, so what we're gonna do is basically cuddle up to the station and start listening for static. We're looking for something that's sparking. Okay, I just saw it and I panic pressed my spacebar button, but what we're looking for is right up here, I'm pretty sure. There we go. So that is a vulnerable data point. And I think all we have to do is get close to it. I'm not 100% sure, but we'll try it out. Scan a data leak. Okay, decrypting data stream. This is Dal. We're getting data from the worm probe. There we go. Good work. Now get out of there safely. All right. So we have scanned them. We're going to GTFO in case they happen to get a little bit pissed off. And sure enough, it looks like we got a bunch of hostile bandits on us. Asteroid. What's the shortcut key? To target the nearest enemy. Okay, Shift E. Falcon. There we go. That will give me information enemy. right here about who the nearest enemy is. At least it gives me a distance there. So I know that I'm kind of giving uh, giving them the slip. So we're just going to fly off in one direction until they are no longer a threat. Until our quest thing changes over. We'll hide some behind some ice, perhaps. Nothing here but us ice sickles. I'm not entirely sure what a safe position is, so... It hasn't triggered yet. Maybe we need to come out of warp to do that. There we go. Okay, so now... What? This guy wants us to get... Two spacesuit bombs. And we're able to craft this. We can get a remote detonator, secure container, and unstable crystal. Lovely. Uh, where can we find... These homemade bomb items at? Probably a trade hub... Is where I should initially be looking. That's a great first episode. We're going to create our own spacesuit terrorist bomb. So they're harassing our friends, so we're going to harass them back. It sounds like we're going to do a little bit of subterfuge at some point. Eh. Oh god, oh god. Sometimes my fancy little slingshot maneuver doesn't always work out right. Okay, so where is a trade hub? That is, I think, what we need in order to buy the goods we uh, will use. There's an equipment dock. I figured the Talati would have one. I'm pretty sure the Argon Federation has one. Here we go. Trading station. All right, we're going to go ahead and go to that. And I will be back once we get there. I think they have, I don't know, maybe more of an inventory of items you could possibly use to craft stuff. But maybe not. Maybe you have that at every station that has an equipment or a, a, a place to, to dock. Alrighty, so we've docked. Let's take one quick peek over at the... I think we can do this by going to the transportation door. Over here elevators transportation door magical there we go let's go over to uh i think we want to go to the trader's corner possibly hello oh god that's terrifying why are you joining me in here what are you doing who are you are you our crew member that is a very interesting run okay so we need a couple of things spacesuit bombs show me your wares buddy uh we got no space suit bomb <laughs> by itself. Where's the bomb launcher? We've got crafting wares, and then we've got trade wares. None of the items I believe that we will need. So I don't know how we actually go about Goodbye. 
getting those raw materials. Let's take a look and see if our mission actually gives us any tips on that. Going offensive. Uh, we have to secure the following items. So acquire two units of spacesuit bomb. Acquire a bomb launcher. I mean, that is what this is, Can correct? Here you go. It's bomb launcher. So we could buy the bomb launcher, except we don't have enough money for it. Okay, fair enough. So that's going to be a mission to do at some point here in the future. Right before I end the episode, let's go back into the map. And we do have our Callisto Sentinel over here, which is parked at the wharf. So let's right click. And I believe... Now if we go to redesign, is it going to work? No, it does not give us any modification Greetings. options. What do we have to do? I thought you were able to give it an order. There we go. We have to do, I think, the upgrade from this menu here. What I want to do is try to put down some satellites inside of this ship. There we go. So we've got a bunch of nav beacons. I'm actually going to get rid of some nav beacons. I don't remember what the nav beacons are for. I think these are just like you place the nav beacon down. And it's something that will always give you a location. We'll keep the laser tower. Let's fill up the flares. And let's go ahead and put about 20 satellites in the inventory in the hull. Cool. Uh, this is going to cost a lot of money. Actually, more money than we have. So maybe just 10 satellites for the start. There we go. Add to shopping list. Confirm order. And it'll be done really, really quickly. So now what I'm going to do... We'll see if this works out. I'm going to click on the ship. And I'm going to give her an, an order to place down some satellites. Now, I want to have some coverage in a few different areas. So I'm going to click here and then deploy a satellite. Now, I'm holding shift down, which should allow me to... I don't know if you need to hold shift down or not, out of habit. But I'm going to hold shift down anyways. Put down a satellite here. And you can see, I think... Yep, the orders are kind of cute. She's going from here and then she'll come up to here. And then we'll come up into Hatikva's Choice, drop down a satellite right between these two locations. I don't quite remember the radius of a normal satellite. So I'm hoping that we get this all in range. Let's put a satellite directly between these two. We've got the spare satellite, so I'm not all that worried about it. We'll put one as well right here couple other trade locations down the road. I'm trying to put them in, in areas that will have multiple factories in one area. Right click again and then civilian deploy satellite. Okay, that's just a little bit of a test to see how this is going to work out. But in theory, our pilot, since she does have this order, she's actually already dropped down a satellite. Oh, that's a pretty big radius. The green here is the radius of the satellite. And now I believe if we go take a look at the silicon refinery, we can check out all of the trade offers. Yes, we can. And this is what's needed to start doing some automated trading. So we're putting down the tools that we'll be using that will give us constant pricing information later on. So we're, we're setting up the infrastructure for our future automated trading system. All right. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this episode up at this point. I hope you did enjoy it so far. Stick with me for more X4 content. We'll be doing... Again, like I said, a kind of a mixed run. We're, we're, our goal, of course, is to make money and to claim a sector, make a massive amount of money down the road. I will be dabbling in some of the faction quest lines. I would like to see what's new in 3.0 as well as the Split Vendetta update. I did run into a bug in Split Vendetta where when I went into the Split Vendetta campaign and tried to go into player information and the Empire, this page was not available at all. And I didn't know if that's because you're part of a faction or if it's a little bit bugged. And I wanted to wait at least a couple more uh, days or weeks until they fix that kind of little bit up. But that's part of the reason why I'm going on this discovery start. And I hope you're okay with that. I, sh I assume there's going to be a lot of people who are doing a playthrough with the, t with the, um, the split faction. But there we are, friends. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of X4. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, if you did enjoy this content, please do like and subscribe. And also leaving a comment, it all bumps the video up in the search results. So that kind of stuff really helps out a small channel grow. And I do thank you so much. If you want to join the Discord to chat about X4, I have a small gaming community. And uh, feel free to check out the link in the Discord for the Discord in the more information page below the video. Thank you guys so much for joining me for X4. I look forward to seeing you again in the next episode. Until then, take care.